What's up guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing some sub D studies. I'll put a picture on the screen now of some of the different designs we'll make with a nice wireframe overlay. These are actually very easy, but I want you guys to kind of watch my workflow, see what I'm doing, just so that way you kind of absorb the information. So you can copy me if you want, or you can just watch this as like a informative video. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. If you're brand new to hard surface modeling and want to learn everything about our workflow in Blender in under 14 days, just like thousands of our other students have done here, check out our hard surface accelerator program in the description below. We'll teach you modeling, design, presentation, rendering, the entire workflow from start to finish. And again, I'll link that below in the description. So we're going to go ahead and start with a basic cylinder here. So shift A, mesh and cylinder. I'm going to use 16 vertices for this one and then move this up. And again, I'm going to be going pretty quickly through this. If this is too fast for you or too advanced, you're probably a beginner, in which case grab the accelerator course, like I said, that's going to get you up to speed incredibly quickly. And this tutorial will just be, you know, a piece of cake. But if you're, you know, familiar with this stuff, these are all very, very basic operations, okay? So I'm just going to get in here and I'm going to create some sort of Boolean kind of in this area, okay? So, you know, kind of in this location more or less. Looks pretty good. And I kind of like to, you know, I like to keep things lined up. I like to kind of plan where these vertices are gonna land more or less. So for example, I know there's gonna be a vertex here and a vertex right here. So I kind of like to keep those lined up just so I'm not you know, disrupting the curvature too much. So we could go in here and apply that. And at this point, I could just kind of, you know, merge those together. I could literally just dissolve this out. Just something very basic. And then I could get in here and what do I want to do for this portion? I could join that up. Let me just go around and I think that should be fine. You could always use the relax tool, but that might mess with the curvature a bit as well, which is an ideal. I'm going to drop a loop up here and then I'm going to drop a loop down here that will actually create the quad for us. Instead, let me put the loop, let me put a loop cut through there. And now we kind of have something a bit a bit cleaner, I'd say. I'm gonna get rid of those markings and kind of slide this up. You can drop a loop in here. Okay, and now we have something you know pretty basic to work with. We'll shade flat, and this is fine for now. Now what I want to do is go back to the cutters collection. I'm gonna take this cylinder. We're gonna duplicate it into a separate object, and what I want to do is union one of these here. Just gonna kind of snap that up, move this up as well. Not sure how far, maybe up here to this point could be okay. And all we really need to do here is run a union boolean. We'll set this to exact just to be safe here. And then all I need to do is literally just get to work. Cleaning this up. It's gonna be a bit of a mess, obviously, but that's the uh, that's the nature of booleans, and this is a very easy like cleanup process. This shouldn't take you a lot of work at all. I mean, look at how quick that was. Maybe if you you know still kind of getting used to all this, it might look like I just did that very quickly, which I did. But you you eventually you develop an eye for what needs removed. Like when I look at this, I already know like this is garbage. You know this is garbage. This is garbage. Like you. You develop an eye for this very quickly the more you do it. So, you know, don't feel bad if you're like, what the hell just happened? It's just done this thousands of times at this point, probably. It's just, just a game of repetition. And that's why I'm making this video so you can kind of observe my workflow. Cool. Now this is looking clean. Let me go ahead and patch up this bottom area because Booleans, if you're not careful, like down here, I need to get that cleaned up. You know, Booleans, especially exact Booleans can cause a huge mess, so that's why you want to be careful. Make sure if there's any issues, you get those sorted. 
you know, any non-manifold geometry. Sometimes the 3D print toolbox can tell you. It's a pretty cool add-on. If you just click on check all, it'll identify non-manifold geometry, which in this case we've removed. So we're looking pretty good. Awesome. Then you can run it test sub D and just kind of see, you know, exactly what's happening. All right, let's just make sure everything is looking pretty clean here. All right, cool. So now what I want to do is just temporarily, let me shade this flat, just temporarily, I'm going to go around here to the bottom and we're just going to add in a crease. I don't need to get these creased. Put that to zero or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to temporarily crease the bottom and crease the top just so I have a quick preview of how this sub D is going to look in this area. All right. Awesome. So let's make sure we don't have any like, you know, problematic end gons or anything. Obviously we do right here. We're just going to inset this, going to delete the face, and then we can just run a grid fill. We'll just search for that with the F3 key. Just rotate that a bit. You can also do like simple blending, change, you know, the span, however you want to do that. And that looks pretty good. Then we can just run another test sub D and we're getting a pretty interesting shape kind of, you know, getting created here. So now what I need to do is create the proximity loop around this area here, right? So I'm trying to think, how do I want to do this without causing problems? Because it's definitely going to cause some issues. What I think we could do is we could select all the way around here. It's going to create a pretty interesting shape. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to press Control B. I'm going to scroll up once and then press the P key to make the shape, the profile set to one. That's gonna give us a natural proximity loop, basically. So you can see it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit tight in this area. Sometimes you could like play with these buttons, like the loop slide, and you might get a little bit of a better result. But overall, we just want that proximity loop right there. So now what I can do is I can basically run my sub D, right click to shade smooth, and we have a pretty interesting shape. It's not too bad. So you could just leave the crease here on the bottom if you just wanted to keep that area flat and then you know, you could run your sub D and then shift click on sharpen just to get you know, something simple like that. That's totally fine. Obviously the topology on the bottom is gonna be a bit of a mess. So it just depends on the workflow you're going for, but you could just as easily like get in here. So I'd honestly just leave the seam, but what you could technically do is just come in here and dissolve that out inset this area and the grid fill is going to be a hit or miss sometimes it's good sometimes it isn't so here we would probably need to increase the offset and actually that worked that worked pretty well and then we can increase the span and maybe not this is what i mean you have to really balance the span with the offset to kind of get you know the desired result this isn't terrible you could try like a simple blending but that might cause some issues as you can see right there. So it just kind of depends. But you know, you could totally do that and just use like a full on sub D workflow. And then do something down there, we'll get rid of the crease. And then here on the top, I could literally inset this, do the same exact thing, run a grid fill. And then just like that, we have a pretty clean looking result. And I know it looks a bit strange here using that, you know, proximity loop in this area, but that's the only way we'd really get this transition right here. And I could totally come in and, you know, I could slide that back a bit and that's going to change how that looks. So you could totally do that. It's not a problem. And now we have this very, very clean transition from the cylinder kind of into the mesh right here. And then at this point, you could, you know, if you're done, you could actually apply the sub D or you could just leave the sub D there and then just get into your, you know, usual Boolean workflow. So I could go in, you know, and just use like our normal hard surface modeling workflow. Now we can actually take a look at the shading. First of all, here's the, you know, topology once again. Gets the job done. You could also just crease the bottom, just keep a large end gone down there. If you wanted to, you could literally just press F to fill that and then just crease it, call it a day. Depends on your workflow, depends what you're going for. We can take a look with a different mat cap and just kind of see. You know, this is very, very clean. 
We have this beautiful transition into the object. It's really not super difficult once you know how to do the basic retopology and kind of uh, you know create these transitions here. So pretty cool. So I'm certainly a fan of sub D. I love using it, and uh, there, there's a time and a place for using sub D. And this is a clear example. If you want to create nice transitions like this, like good luck doing this with just unions and bevels, especially with super clean shading like this. It's not going to happen. So that's why I like to show kind of both workflows, especially like a hybrid workflow. But this is just super, super clean. It is very satisfying to look at. That's one of the best things about sub D is it creates a very satisfying aesthetic to it. I think that's my favorite part about a sub D workflow. Whereas with just a normal hard surface modeling workflow using only booleans and bevels with no sub D, you get very clean, hard defined edges, very kind of technical design. So it ultimately depends what you're going for. This I would still consider a hard surface shape. We're just using sub D to accomplish it. And if you want to have a bit of extra fun with this, what you could actually do is play with some deform modifiers because again, since we're uh, you know using sub D and we have quad topology and whatever, we could actually get in here, we could use a you know simple deform and it's going to actually deform very nicely. So you could kind of get in here and do some cool stuff. Now if you go too crazy, the topology is not going to be dense enough to handle that. But you know, you can get in here and create some pretty interesting shapes. You could try playing with like the bend mode. I don't know why you would want to make this. I'm just kind of giving you an example of another way you could kind of use sub D to create very cool and interesting shapes. So it's a pretty cool way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and remove that for now. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the workflow. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with using a similar workflow. So if you create anything cool, definitely send it my way. And again, if this is a bit too confusing or you need to get used to the workflows that we use, grab our accelerator course in the description below. You're going to get the same exact results just as our students have done here. It's going to take you one to two weeks in general, and that's assuming you work like one hour a day on the course. So you'll learn literally everything you need to know about hard surface modeling very, very quickly. And again, I'll link that program in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.